Hey, welcome to this uh, video. We are talking about uh, menus in Openbox. So we have this thing here and we can change it. We can also change it from language if you wanted to. But that's an, uh, a different kind of thing we shall have to do. Um, so menus, where are my menus in Openbox? Where are the files? We need to know if we're going to phase two, phase three, phase four. We need to know where uh, information is stored. With Ctrl H, and I have my screen key not activated, so let's do that for you guys. Screen key is activated now. Ctrl H. All right, everything works. Super Shift, Ctrl H. Fine. So if you do the hidden files, if you show the hidden files, you'll have this information here. We've chosen in Arch Merge to choose for an easy system. Now, what's the easy system? is that the menu is generated. So OB menu generator is the one that's going to do everything. There are two files that are important and the config PL or, or uh, Perl um, is a file where all the information is stored. But the only thing you actually can do that is change your terminal. That's the only thing that's really interesting, um, I think. Okay, so that's something you can change and the bulk of the information is in the schema or scheme. I don't know how to pronounce it really. And here you can say I don't want this name. If I press super return, I don't want this name here. I want some other name uh, like for instance uh, Nemesis or, or uh, Terminator or anything really. So you can have your own name there. It's going to open a lot of things and if you say no really I don't need this kind of element there and then when you press super uh, sorry yes yeah, super correct spacebar then you see file manager something is missing here I had four things now I have three things now so something is, is hidden is uh, saved and it's gone so it's that easy to delete uh, things and of course also edit things if you have to, if you just go this way, Control C and then Control V, and you get a line to work on, and you say, okay, I want to have something else there. I want to have, uh, I don't know, anything really. So this is the program Exo Open. You can check it out. Exo Open. I don't know if we get something if we type this here. Yep, so we can exo open mail reader, file manager, terminator, emulator. So we can add these codes to the line instead of this one. You see, file manager, web browser. So we're missing one of them, which is the mail reader. So we could add, add that. But you can also just say, I want my evolution or something. No? But then you have to change everything. So not just the title, but everything. So you see we have here the word terminal, um, so file manager, you have to change this again. So there's a command, there's a label and the icon. So command, label, it's not file manager anymore, it's evolution. And you can type it in any language you want, of course, if you want to have it in Russian, type it in Russian. So I don't care, it's just text, so edit it. And there you go, we have now evolution and evolution is going to, do you want to make evolution your default email client? Uh, okay, and it's and we're off changing things. So that's how you edit these lines. If you want to have it a little bit nicer, just press a few taps. And that's me, of course. I want to have everything in order and it's a little bit not in order, but whatever. So that's okay. Um, I believe I did something here to that line, so like so. Looks better. So it seems I have now two lines, hmm? as you can see, Control S, and indeed we have Terminal Terminal. So if wanted to have a GNOME Terminal, or if I wanted to have URXVT or anything, so two terminals at the top, I could just change these words. Commands, first one, label, and icon. 
If you don't know what the name of the icon is, you should uh, take a look. Um, and where do we go and look for that? In the file system, in the user, in the share, in the icons, you go inside the folder that's of the, the uh, icon theme that you like most. Uh, if you say Numix Circle is my thing, you go look in there, or Papyrus, Papyrus is my thing, you go in there. I'll go check in Sardi and Scalable apps and you go for evolution and there you see that's the, the name evolution svg if you want to have something else you go to i don't know gimp voila it's called gimp there's also gimp 2 gimp 2.8 and so on so things that are you should know use this name here but as you can see there is no svg or png or whatever it's just a name and he'll figure it out if there are PNGs or SVGs so that's better okay so control Z's get rid of all that with all the old changes what else this is our separator that's this line if you want to have separators that's great this thing is actually created from here till here is created by OB menu generator I did not do one thing I didn't change anything, didn't, cannot change anything, it's just a label is, is going to check everything that's in user share applications and is going to put everything together which has a like, category, utility, a category, development and so on and so on and so on. Yeah? So it's um, generated, nothing we can do there I'm afraid. This is a pipe menu which is a program Arch Merge places pipe menu and it's going to look for something. It's going to look for places and so on. You can open and browse here, stuff like that. Same applies here, what you opened. So these are menus. The only thing we can actually change is uh, put it in French or in English or in German or anything else. No? Recent files, the same applies here. You put it in your own language, but keep off from the rest. Then another uh, a line as you can see a separator and then we start again in conkeys conkeys are always i'm uh, sorry in pipe menu so the conkey is a pipe menu which means it will not have any icons which means it's a program which means it cannot change languages the only thing you can do is change this label here and call it something else but i guess a conkey is a conkey even in english or in french so we're down to preferences and theme so these are all labels you can change whatever you want here it's a name it's text here is your application this is what the title looks like what the menu looks like so preferences choose wallpaper so you can have this in, in any language you want and this again pointing to icons that are in your system okay anything else anything out of the ordinary I will talk about this one, the, the menu.xml, um, but I'll probably I'll point to it and explain it in another tutorial. But everything is the same, so you have names. Some of the names you can change. Um, anything in the menu can change, but uh, not these things. They follow the elements coming from user share applications. So if the developer of, I don't know, of Plank did not add a translation in Russian, you won't see it. It's up to the developers to put in their um, text there, in icons, a translation. If it's not done, it's not done. Okay, <clears throat> anything else? So this is all about changing your menu. You can get rid of a lot of things if you say I don't want all these things, need to know, I don't want it. Help resources, display keybinds, I'll figure it out myself. So a lot of things can just be, I wouldn't delete it, but I'll put a uh, hashtag in front of it. If you say never use this thing here, okay, save, up, done. And it's, it's a good thing maybe to do if you have, for instance, a smaller screen, a laptop which is small and we get this big huge menu and they say, whoa, it's too huge, I'm going to kill a few things of these, of, of the, these four lines for instance, you can just 
omit these lines because you can go to your uh, plank here on the side and you'll have for instance the terminal there and so on and so on so it's up to you to change it um, this layout it's a generated layout and that's the power of the thing if you make if you install something it comes right in here it will never co come here because these are actually programs that's a program that's the programs pipe menus pipe menus and all programs here these are all main manually made uh, menus and here we are at the OP menu generator so here's a shortcut to the same file as you can see and the same applies here you have here a shortcut to the config for your termite maybe that you don't want to use so that's it that's a neat trick you don't need to recall where it is it's here and then you can generate a pipe menu this is the standard one maybe it's interesting to for you to show that when you open um, sorry when you open op menu box open box so there are two things there is this one is the menu what's in here is this now when I open it, <coughs> nothing is in there, it's just a program, it's a program running it. So that's the power of the thing, but here you cannot edit it, you need to edit it, the other files that we just went to. But can you, you can also make your own manual, but I'll make a separate tutorial about that, which is actually just an XML, and that's really typing everything out. But when you make, when you delete a uh, program, you have to edit yourself, when you... Um, install a program you have to edit yourself okay so that's uh, the idea so now I wanted to show the following <coughs> when you have XML open so menu XML is this and when I change it that's the one thing I wanted to show you generate a pipe menu that's a program static menu if you do that and you open it again then it says uh -huh, uh -huh, reload and this is your normal open box menu, which says, okay, there is start table, that's the label. The action is execute. And what are you going to execute? User bin dark table. That's it. And all the rest are like similar like HTML tags. Close, open, close, open, close, open. Yeah. So <coughs> you can, um, you have here this uh, ability to change things but if you do next time you create an XML it's gonna be overwritten again so next time when you click it's gone again so that's not a good idea to actually edit it it's a better idea to make it up here in the scheme and change things here and another thing is the pipe menu with icons if you choose that then you get this kind of look you hate it or you like it this is a clean installation. You'll see icons that are not in order. I'll just do it quickly. Can't stress that enough. Can't repeat that enough. That is just you, sorry, pseudo. That is just you doing this thing here and then forgetting all about it. And it's in order. So the software engineers have made a wrong, uh, a hard coded path. So if you now go to here, you'll see that, where was it? You'll see that uh, things have been changed or not. All things, icons are in order. All are grayed out, are our Sardi icons, so that's okay. That's as easy as it gets, hard code fixer. That's it, pseudo. So we have now these icons, generate a static menu with icons. We have closed our genie. Let's take a look at our menu. So again, OB menu generator minus I, I from icons. And what if we do the other way, static menu with icon, static, so you know what's gonna happen. Reload, and it's this one for instance, terminal, get the icon from Eric, config, OB manager, and then a cache, and this is a cache kind of thing, and then execute what? Exo open launch terminal. So it's a complete XML file, and this is how it looks. Again, don't go changing things in here, because next time when you press it, it's gone again. 
it's overwritten. So every time it's generated when you press this button or that button, it's going to be overwritten. If you have changed your icon sets to Surfing, for instance, you have to refresh your icon set so that you get new icons in. Whoa, <clears throat> I think that's uh, about it. The other tutorial I'm going to make is about the manually created uh, icon, uh, sorry, the manually created uh, menu, which is also possible, but then you have to edit, have change the files in here. So you have to get rid of this one and this is going to be your final uh, XML menu then. All right, I hope it was instructive. Um, do change uh, the menus yourself to any language you want and um, back it always up if you make new installations, put it on Dropbox, OneDrive so that the work is not lost. And um, that's it. Cheers.